If you think you've seen it all, this it's coming back, bro. Frosted tips? No. Cassette tapes? Uh-uh. 90s fashion. Well, I mean... But Dunkaroos? <laughs> They're coming back, baby! Yeah. Yee Scroop my nuples. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 142. Woo! 142? Is that what you said? Did you say 140? I did say 142. And Janice. Janice is doing a great job at at, at Get, keeping up with with at least giving me the mug okay we have the white sneakers award 2005 mug right here but what we don't have is fluid in it but you know what i'm not gonna get mad at janice i'm not gonna get mad at janice you know what she's a fine person fuck you janice <clears throat> she's uh she deserves better than this she 100 percent uh-oh my stream deck's frozen Okay. <laughs> Listen, I already recorded this episode halfway. And then I had to stop because some business ran into my face. So I had to stop and take care of business. Because this, I'm not, this, see, this podcast is not established enough to the point where it takes priority over everything else. I wish I could say that it does, but it doesn't. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll find out anyway, because I'll talk about it. Okay? Um, So as you've seen in the the opening sequence, Dunkaroos are making a comeback. Hallelujah. Am I right? Uh, We all loved them as a child. At least I did. I think I've even talked about them before on this podcast. But they're fucking making a comeback. In the summer, they shouldn't have even left. Just like Vine. Okay? Now, they brought Vine back with a, with a little app called Byte. B-Y-T-E. I'm on it. I made one video. It does not have... I mean, it's... I'm seeing the classic Viners go over to Byte. Specifically, Chris Melberger. And he seems to love it. Me... I don't know, not so much, dude. I mean, I've kind of been in a slump. As usual, I'm always fucking depressed and anxious, and so, I don't know, it's hard for me to even get back into anything. Let alone bite, right? Am I right? I've been sick for the past three days. The first thing I did this morning was sneeze. That's right. It's been one week. Hasn't. So, donkeys. They're making a comeback, bro. And also, as I record this episode, apparently Kurt Douglas, Kirk Douglas, kicked the old bucket. He passed. Uh, Not really familiar with his work. I mean, I I know of him. This is such a millennial thing to say, but... uh, You know what? I talked about... I've I've talked about celebrity deaths on this podcast before or even just deaths in general and i'm kind of i don't know if i want to do that anymore because it's kind of a way to even though i'm not making any money on this podcast it's a way of monetizing off someone's death you know whether it's just through views or actual money Um. so i'm not going to i'm not going to bother um you know, if someone dies, I might I might mention it, but I'm not gonna go into into too too much depth on the subject. I'm just gonna stick to what I want to talk about. And so, uh, before I we get into what I actually want this episode to be, I just want to mention a a person, okay? 
an OG YouTuber. You may you may or may not have heard of this person. If you were on YouTube, you know, back in the day, from two thousand somewhere in between two thousand eight to two thousand thirteen, uh, you would have known of a cat named Cassim G. Okay, OG motherfucking YouTuber, super funny, super talented. But the guy has been on a hiatus for a few years now. Um, he just stepped away from YouTube. Because, you know, he's been going through shit. Everyone does. Um, and so this... And I mean, Ka I just want to say that Cassim was one of the reasons why I started podcasting. Okay? Because I in two, around 2016, I saw the impact that that podcasts are having. And I became obsessed with podcasts and I'm still obsessed with them to this day. It's pretty well all I do every day is is watch or listen to podcasts while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. If I'm doing something that I don't have to communicate with someone, I've got earbuds in and I'm listening to podcasts. Or if I'm at home, I'm just watching them, you know? So he started a podcast 2 years ago called The Casm Show. And it wasn't your everyday podcast. He he really implemented the visual aspect into his podcasts. Uh, super like creative and like sketches within the podcast. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this. But I just haven't figured it out yet. Because I've, we definitely need an innovation in the podcast form. Because podcasts are super influential. And they're growing exponentially. And so, if I don't jump on the bandwagon, I mean, if I don't create my own bandwagon, that being uh, uh, expanding on the idea of what a podcast is and turning it into something more special, then someone else is going to get ahead of me and do it first. And I mean, Kasim already did it in his fucking in the Kasim show but he only made it to episode 28 and then he stopped and it sucks I don't mean the podcast sucks I mean it sucks that he stopped you know but I mean I understand because he's been featured on on other people's content here and there like Doug Benson and and whatever else so he'll casually occasionally talk about the reasons why he you know he's not a part of YouTube anymore and it just really saddens me that someone this influential and this great gave up for whatever reason they just didn't feel like he just doesn't feel like he can have that impact on YouTube anymore and you know it sucks to see, but 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 what is what is good is that he actually is part of a new podcast. Okay, they're called Pajama Pants. It's him and two other people. The two other people were former cast members of The Sopranos. They were kids when they were on The Sopranos. Um, but all three of these people have issues in their life, and they talk about it. On the, I mean that's not what the what the pajama pants podcast is about, but from what I've seen so far, that's kind of you know they're really good at expressing their struggles in their life. So that's that's one of the things I want why I want to talk about this because I want to recommend the pajama pants podcast because if you know Casim G, and if he has influenced you the same way he's in influenced me, you're gonna want to check out this podcast. So you can find out more about Kasim and why he has left. Um, I mean, it's a small, it's still a small ass channel. They only have 836 subscribers. They average, you know, as you can see here, that I think their highest. So they only have 20 episodes out. Wait, is this all they have uploaded? They only have 20 episodes available. But it looks like only episodes 16 to 20 are on YouTube. 
the rest are on Spotify and whatnot. Speaking of which, my podcast is on Spotify, iTunes, and Google. So if you want to listen to an audio version, you, you can do it on the good platforms. It's no longer on, on SoundCloud. But also I should mention my um, podcast, the audio version is only available from episode 132 on. Or 130, somewhere around the 130 somewhere. Anyway, yeah, so they had Dr. Drew on. Uh, I've only actually listened to three episodes so far. But it's just nice to see that Cass was actually doing something again. And the most recent episode of Pajama Pants, he mentions he does have some stuff in store, but he doesn't want to talk about it at all because, and I understand that, because you, you sometimes you'll talk about stuff and then it just can't happen for whatever reason, and so everyone was hyped up about it, and then it's, you know, it doesn't happen. So, completely understandable. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about Kasim. Um So, yeah. So, I, I should also preface, pre- preface, preface that he's not only known for this podcast that he's had. You know, he's originally known for his uh, California On series where he just walks around California with a topic and a microphone and a camera, and he talks to people, asks them funny questions. He makes it a funny, you know, interview with random people. He also did the Going Deep, where he interviews porn stars. He also did a few kind of like mini-docs, California on Ghosts, California on Sasquatch, where him and his friends just go find ghosts and uh sasquatch you know uh just classic classic content here they they definitely still hold up to this day you know and he's friends with 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 all kinds of people bobby lee nathan barnett what the hell's that noise um slick johnson theo vaughn uh, Stevie, Stevie Weeby, of course, Mitchell Davis, uh, Jack's Films, Mike Falzone, Tyler Riz- Taylor Rizzo, Eddie Ift, Tony Cavallero, Steve Zaragoza, Michael Gallagher, and I mean, he's, he's friends with everyone, like uh, all the classic YouTubers as well, uh, you know, he was a part of Maker Studios, he was... He was, you know, like I said, I keep saying it, but he's he's literally, he was one of the OG YouTubers, and now he's just a nobody. Hate to say it, but he is, and that happens, and it just sucks to see. So I would like to spread more awareness about Kasim G, even though I'm not spreading any awareness because nobody watches this shit anyway, but hopefully eventually someone will. Any hoozle... This podcast, this episode of the Dynamite Jizzard podcast is going to revolve around, uh, what do you call these things? Power rankings. I've done these before, okay? And I'm doing one again in commemoration of the fact that Dunkaroos are making a comeback. (laughs) Woo! So what's a power ranking? Well, you have, you basically have a tier ranking system, okay? Uh, you have S being superior, and then A all the way to F. F being the worst tier, okay? F is the garbage piece of the shit stuff. You know, A is good, S is the superior. Um, I think in the past I've done this with... What the hell did I do it with in the past? TV shows or something? I can't even remember. I know I've done it. Oh, with like Canadian foods or something. I can't remember. I think I've done it twice. But this version is going to be classic late 90s slash early 2000s snacks. Okay? I'm going to rank them from superior to fucking terrible. Now, we've here's what we have right here. Audio listens, you, listeners, you can't see this, but I will talk about it so you will be able to hear what I'm saying. 
I had way more than what you see here. Um, but I had to narrow it down because I had so many that it actually just filled off this whole screen. And, you know, I could have used that many, but I was like, that's just going to be a fucking nine hour podcast if I do that. So these are the ones I narrowed it down to because these are the main ones that really were influential to me in either a good way or a bad way. Plus, these are, you know, out of all the ones I had, these were the most popular. And so that's what we're going with. So if there is some on here that you're going to be like, well, why didn't you put this there? Why didn't you put that there? <laughs> Sorry, I got the hiccups. It's because, fuck you, that's why. <laughs> okay, so let's rank these bad boys, shall we? First, let, let me just do a quick rundown for the audio listeners what we have here. So starting from the top, we got Gushers. French Toast Crunch, Warheads, Kid Cuisine, Dunkaroos, Scooby Snacks, Fruit Roll-Ups, Twistables, Bugles, SpongeBob Popsicles. Uh, okay, so it's SpongeBob Popsicles, but, you know, any of the character Popsicles. But I just use SpongeBob because that's what I like. Anyway, Ring Pops, Surge Soda, ice, uh, Icy Squeeze, Doritos Guacamole, Airheads. Yogo's Bites, Kissables, So Delicious, uh, Heinz Easy Squirts, Wonka Fun Dip, uh, Hubba Bubba Bubble Jug, <laughs> Nerds, uh, Kraft, Mac and Cheese Microwavable Version, Pixie Sticks, Jolt Cola, Crystal Pepsi, Pop-Ups Popsicles, and uh, the 3D Chips. They come in like a, a tube, like a kind of like a Pringles tube, but shaped slightly different. Uh, we'll talk about it more as we run through these. So let's just start, shall we? Um, yeah. It's been. Um, oof. See, because I already did this episode. I, I, I said this in the beginning. I already filmed this. So I already had these kind of halfway sorted throughout the tier list. But I don't remember exactly how I had them before. So it might be completely different than what I had originally. But that doesn't matter because you don't know. You don't know what I had originally. So f*** you. We're going to start with push-up pops. Okay? Uh, do you remember these? You know, if you were born in... The 90s or whatever, grew up in the early 2000s, you probably would have seen these. Definitely would have seen these. It's a popsicle in a cylinder shape, and you push it up to reveal the popsicle because it's coated around like a piece of paper. And you got to push it to suck on it. These were, these were tasty, uh, but they weren't one of my go-tos, okay? So I think these are going to get a C for me. I'm going to put them in the C category. Now, I may change it cuz I did it before. I you know, as we go through this, I may change it, who knows. But right now, it's going in the C category. Um whoo, what should we do next? Let's just, you know what? Let's just run through these you know, as they come from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, left to right. You know the system. Gushers. These were definitely one of my all-time favorites. I, re I still actually remember my first time discovering Gushers and how I felt just by seeing the package. I don't know why, but looking at the Gushers package as a kid, I was like, this is the coolest fucking piece of candy you could ever have because it's shaped like like a what do you call it a fucking like a gem like a gemstone it's shaped like a gemstone they're all different colors they got a gooey substance in the middle when you bite it and they're a chewy candy i love chewy candy you'll you'll find that out here i much prefer a chewy candy over a hard candy. 
So this had everything that I would ever want in a candy. Like even the font of the word Gushers, the the yellow package with the blue, red, green, and orange splattering on the front. It just reminded me of the show Uh-Oh. And I'm pretty sure these were a sponsor on Uh-Oh because they resembled it so much. So these, for me, are definitely going in the superior category. Like, there's no question. I don't care what you think, but for, this, is, this is for me, okay? So Gushers are superior. This is so stupid. <laughs> Why do people do this? Is this entertaining? Probably not, but it's, it's a thing on YouTube. So, every, you know, this isn't something I'm going to be doing all the time. This is just an occasional thing for me. Uh, kid cuisine. Uh, I remember which category I put these in. So they're going back into that category. But I'm going to preface here. You don't know what kid cuisines are. These were... We call them TV dinners. I don't know if other people call them this. But where I was from, we called them TV dinners. Just like a... You know, a tray of food you throw in the microwave had different sections in the tray you know this one has like mac and cheese and corn and nuggets and then a brownie for dessert throw it in the microwave for like five minutes pull that bad boy out usually if there was potatoes in there they were frozen solid still (laughs) so you had to chop up the potatoes put some butter in there maybe and maybe some butter in the corn throw it back in the microwave Heat up for another two minutes. Pull it back out. And then you got like soupy potatoes. I mean, they, they're not that good. But let me tell you. I'm trying to make this tier list from the perspective of when I was a child. Okay? I'm not basing this off of how I would like these today. I'm basing it off of how I would like it as an eight-year-old kid. Or however old. Uh, and I know... Specifically, the kid cuisines with the penguin, okay? I couldn't get enough of these. These were my all-time favorite. As horrible as that is, no kid should have to eat this. (laughs) I loved these. I fucking loved these. And let me tell you, I have great memories eating these. Just looking at this package... Makes me feel happy inside. I'm always sad inside. (laughs) But looking at this makes me happy on the inside. And so that, on top of the fact that I actually loved this as a child, and the packaging is is great as well, I'm a colorful person. And the 90s were a colorful time. And that's probably why I'm a colorful person. (laughs) When I say I'm a colorful person, I mean I like colors. I'm not a happy person. I'm a... Miserable piece of shit. <laughs> it's been. <laughs> but. Um. So these kid cuisines are also going in the S category. Okay, we got two S's right off the bat. Holy moly. Uh, let's move on to Surge. I just want to see how long we've been going so far. I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. I can smell what they're cooking downstairs. I can smell what they're cooking again. Okay, Surge. Surge soda. I never actually. I think I've had this maybe once, but I know it was very popular. Uh, it's basically like a lemon lime soda, and lemon lime sodas, out of all the sodas, are my favorite. But Surge specifically, I don't remember it. I remember maybe having it once. I just remember it was popular. So I'm putting this in the C category as well. With the pop-ups. Boppity boopity. Uh, okay, let's do airheads. These were... I like these. These were pretty good, okay? Chewy. Uh, lots of colors. <laughs> um, and all right packaging. You know, they weren't something I would go to. They weren't something I hated. I did like them. I did enjoy them. But these are also getting a C for me. They're nothing special to me. They're not that special. Okay. Easy squirts. Heinz easy squirts. Now, I know these aren't really a snack, okay? 
but they're essential to the early 2000s, okay? I keep saying okay. Stop saying okay. These, I have vivid memories of these. I remember when they were released into the, into the fucking stores. I remember everyone in my school talking about these and everyone having these. And the majority of kids who had these hated them because they said they tasted funny. But it was just ketchup. It was just ketchup, different colored. And I don't care what you say, it did not taste different. It's an illusion. It, it tasted like ketchup. And I knew this as a kid. And I liked these. Everyone hated these. Because they said it was gross. They said it was gross not only because it tasted gross, or, or so they thought it tasted gross, but they also didn't like the color. And that's why they didn't stick around. But I think they should have stuck around. I had the purple and the green. And I think the red. Because they had a red version as well. Basically, it's just in an easier squirtable bottle. And it's colorful ketchup. I don't know why they got rid of them. Well, actually, I do. Because everyone hated them. But I enjoyed them. But to put them in the B or A category, I mean, it's just ketchup. So... Ah... <sighs> I'm putting it in the C category as well. Let's go in and see. Okay. You're thinking you're probably thinking that should have been an F, but no. I liked it. It was fun. Okay, mac and cheese. I did the mac and cheese microwavable version. Because the box mac and cheese that you do on the stove is, you know, still available, still popular. It's not essential to the to the early nineties or two thousands or late nineties, early two thousands. But the macaroni microwavable version came out in the early 2000s. And so, it, you know, that's why it's in this category. But the microwavable version of the Kraft mac and cheese it was not good. I didn't, I'd eat it because I, I was fine with eating most things, even if I didn't really like it. But it just wasn't good. You put water in it. Throw it in the microwave and then dump the cheese. It just wasn't good. So, this is getting an F. Uh, maybe not, though. Maybe an E. I'll put it in the E category. Because it's still edible. I don't know, but it wasn't that great. Uh, pixie sticks. This is an easy F for me. I'm just going to straight up say it. Pixie sticks are F. Here's why. I'm not a fan of, you know, just straight sugar. I, did, I don't know. I don't like that when these companies, I mean, a lot, a lot of kids love Pixie Sticks. I remember. Because it's just sugar. It's, it's flavored sugar. But I just, I don't know. I never liked it. I never liked the sugar. Plus, the Pixie Sticks themselves... If you don't know, they're basically like a straw, a sealed off straw full of flavored sugar, okay? You rip off the top, you dump the sugar in your mouth. I didn't like them because if you rip off the top or if you bite off the top and saliva gets into that straw, it immediately clogs up the opening with sugar and you can't get any of it out no matter how hard you try it's clogged and that sugar's not coming out and so you know sometimes you'd go to pour it in your mouth and your tongue would accidentally touch the tip and it would just clog it instantly and i remember i always had that issue and a lot of the kids didn't have that issue but i always had that fucking issue because I could feel all the sugar. And I'm like, why isn't this sugar coming out of this fucking straw? It's completely open, but you can't see what's going on in there. It's because it was full of saliva and the, the, the sugar just clumps up and hardens there. And so you'd always have to cut it, cut it with some scissors and carefully keep your mouth open while you dump it in. I don't know. I just didn't like it. It wasn't for me. Easy F. Easy F. 
E Z F for me twistables. Uh, these are not that memorable for most people, I can imagine. But I remember these. I remember the commercials for these. I remember having these. And I remember enjoying these. They fit my criteria of what I enjoy in a uh, candy. Okay? They're colorful. <laughs> <laughs> they're chewy. And they're kind of fun to play with. They're... They're like solid straws of candy. Different colors, twisted up, like look looks like a strand of DNA. You grab a strand and you pull it off. And you eat the strand. Or you just eat the whole fucking thing like a maniac. Like when the kids wouldn't peel the string cheese, they just eat the whole fucking thing right off the bat. Which if I have string cheese nowadays, I don't peel it. Because I don't like getting my dirty fingernails in there and... <laughs> As a kid, he didn't care about that shit. But Twistables, there was no fingernails involved. You just grab a strand and pull. So these, and not only that, but they tasted good. Actually, they didn't taste that good. <laughs> they tasted all right. But, like, compared to the taste of Gushers, no. Not even close. They kind of had a little bit of a stale taste, if I remember. So I'm putting them in B because they have a lot of good qualities. But it's just that one quality that's not so good which is the flavor icy squeeze now this if you don't know what this is it comes in like a tube like a toothpaste tube you pop the top off and you squeeze what looks like toothpaste out of it but it's not toothpaste it's it's like a slushy and thick gelatinous form and you just squirt it in your mouth and kind of mush it around in there and swallow it. <laughs> I did, So I, I enjoyed this because of the fact that it was chewy. It's a creative, fun way to eat candy. But again, I don't think it tasted that great. Plus, I didn't really eat these a lot. So, I'm giving this a C as well. I see squeeze. Dunky Roos, baby. Let's move on to Dunkies. This would be so much more fun with another person, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's kind of boring by yourself. I mean, this whole podcast would be better with another person to, to just say something, right? Whatever. I got to run through this a bit quicker because I'm getting hungry. Dunky Roos. Dunkies, this is the reason why I'm doing this tier list, because Dunkaroos are coming back. Dunkaroos are one of my faves. You got a cookie on one side and frosting in the other. Dip and dunk, eat. But they were not, I'm not giving them the S tier, they're getting the A tier. Because although they were great, they were not superior. Bugles. One of my favorite chips as a child. I feel like the flavor has changed since I was a child. They don't taste the same as what I remember. But, you know, I'm rating this based off of how I liked it as a child, right? So, okay, stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as a child, these were a delectable delight for me. Uh, they're fun to play with. Put them on your fingers. Yeah, they're getting an A. Bugles are getting an A. They're good stuff. Doritos guac. Essential to the early 2000s, I think. Or late 90s, maybe. I don't, I don't think they make them anymore, but I just remember when they existed. I remember trying them, and I remember liking them. I didn't know what guacamole was. <laughs> but I know I like Doritos guacamole. I didn't I wasn't crazy about them. I preferred zesty cheese or the original Doritos. So they're getting a B for me, bro. A B. Hershey's Kissables. What are Hershey's Kissables? Basically Hershey's Kisses in miniature form 
but they're coated in like a candy coating. Colorful candy. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. They were fairly tasty, and you could shove a bunch of them in your mouth. I didn't, uh, you know, they're all right. I remember they didn't, I don't, they weren't around very long. I'm putting them in the C category. A lot of these are probably going to go in the C category if I think about it. Don't know. Anyway, fun dip. Here we go. Another sugary piece of shit. I don't like fun dip. Well, let me think. I didn't really like fun dip as a kid, but I would eat it if it, you know, came in my proximity. <laughs> if I had an opportunity to eat fun dip because it was, you know, given to me by an adult or... I, that sounds weird, but... <laughs> you know, I ate it. I would never go to the store and physically buy it. It would be my last option. If you don't know what fun dip is... It's like a package separated in half, okay? One half of the package is just full of flavored sugar. And you know I don't like flavored sugar because the pixie sticks. And the other half, there's just like a one solid stick, one solid candy stick, okay? You take the candy stick out, you lick the candy stick, get it nice and wet, dip it in the sugar, take it out of the sugar, lick the sugar off the candy stick. And when you're done with all the sugar, you just eat the candy stick, okay? cool concept i don't like hard candy i don't like straight sugar so easy f for me i'm sorry i know a lot of people a lot of people like fun dip me i didn't really jolt cola this was huge this was this swept the nation when it came out it says on the package or on the can i mean I tried zooming in, but it's blurry as fuck. It says on the can, uh, like, twice the sugar, or, or what does it say? All the, sh I gotta look it up. One second. Take me one second. Just, just, just give me one second. <sighs> macaroni, macaroni. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Open, open, open. Here it is. Okay. Drag it in here. It says, all the sugar and twice the caffeine. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All the sugar, twice the caffeine. Uh, it definitely woke you up. It gave you a jolt when you drank it, but it did not taste good. Of course, though, I liked it because of the marketing. They were good, you know, people are good at marketing. And so, I actually didn't drink a lot of these, but I did drink them. Hmm, but they didn't taste very good. They kind of tasted like flat pop, if I remember correctly. I want to give them a C, but I've got nothing in the D category, which is fine. We might get there. French Toast Crunch. Now this is different than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It does not taste the same as Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It has its own unique flavor and the cereal shapes look like pieces of French toast. Now this was probably, if not, my favorite cereal as a kid. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's had, it had such a unique flavor. And I'm putting it in the superior category without saying much more about it because I think it was superior to my childhood. This is me, not you. Scooby Snacks, another one of my favorites. Just chewy candy in a bag, you know? Fruit snacks. That's what they were. Fruit fucking snacks, bruh. Fruit fucking snacks, bruh. Um, yeah. So, another, I love Chewy Candy, love colors, love Scooby-Doo. Green was my favorite color. <laughs> so, it's going in the A. SpongeBob Popsicle. Uh, these these were found in stores, but they were also found on the ice cream trucks, which I don't even know if they have them anymore. 
Ice Cream Man would come by, you'd hear the music, you'd fucking freak out, you'd you'd scrounge up some money from your parents or somewhere, and you'd run out there before he fucking passed by your house. And this was definitely something I always got, only because I loved SpongeBob. Okay. Uh, it, but it did taste. It actually tasted all right. It it was actually pretty tasty. Now that I think about it, I I actually enjoyed the taste. I did not. I'm not just saying that because I was just obsessed with the fact that it was SpongeBob. I remember actually liking the taste. Now his eyeballs were made of gumballs, black gumballs, and I think it was black licorice. So I didn't eat them. Even if it wasn't black licorice, I'm not a fan of gum. So I wouldn't even bother with them. I would I would bite them out at one point and just spit them out. Now, he looks he looks like SpongeBob, right? But when you actually purchase these, okay? They do not look like this. Usually the eye is bigger than the other eye and it's like in the middle of his face and his smile is like deformed and he's not even a square sometimes. They never looked like the way they were supposed to. So that was always gave me a good laugh. Well, these things, I'm giving them an A. No, I'm giving them a B. I don't care what you think. This is what I think. Okay? Yogo's bits. These were little balls. <laughs> little balls. Little yogurt balls. It was not like soft, liquidy yogurt. It was like... Uh, hardened yogurt. I don't know, like chewy yogurt. You know, like yogurt covered raisins. Is that that's a, that exists, right? Yeah, like that kind of yogurt, like hardened chewy yogurt. Okay, but it was a, a ball of yogurt covering in a candy coating, like Kissables. <coughs> God, their fucking food stinks, dude. I can smell through goddamn food, and it's always burnt. But the yogos bits. These weren't around very long, but they were, they were, you know what? These are going in the D because they weren't the best. Oliver, you need to stop that right now. Bubble jug, bubble jug. I could have put bubble, I had bubble tape in here, but I also had some other kind of, I had hubba bubba, I had bubble tape and I had bubble jug and I had some other fucking bubble gum. And I was like, yeah, I can't have all this bubble gum, dude. You know? So I narrowed it down to just bubble jug. Because this is kind of the iconic. This and bubble tape. But I mean, even the hubba bubba square, you know, they're all iconic. But I narrowed it down to the bubble jug because this is the mem- most memorable to me. I like this because it came in a jug. And I used to, after I'd eat all the gum out of it, I'd play with it in the bathtub. Uh, but as I said earlier, I'm not a fan of gum, you know, like it's just gum. You chew on it for a while and then the flavor goes away and you're still chewing on it. And so I wouldn't actually buy this when I was at the stores and when my parents would be like, or my parent would be like, Hey, what do you want? Pick something. I wouldn't ever go for the bubble jug. But again, it was offered to me a few times, and I've had an opportunity to eat it. And yeah, it's tasty gum, and the container's cool, but I would never buy it. So this is also going to get a D for me. Hubba bubba bubble. Uh, Pepsi Crystal, okay? It's Pepsi without the darkness. It's just see-through Pepsi, clear, translucent Pepsi. Say what you want, you'd be like, it tastes different. Maybe it does slightly, but it's still kind. Of, you know, if you did a blind, blind uh, taste test, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Maybe I don't know. I never really even was a fan of Pepsi. I just know this was a big hit. Uh, so this, you know what? I'm putting this in the D as well. Because, like I said, I prefer lemon lime type drinks. So, Pepsi, no. Pepsi, no. Crystal Pepsi, no. D, for me, easy. Warheads. These are sour candy. Sour hard candy. Um, 
I hated sour candy as a kid, and I hated hard candy as a kid. Now, the packaging is really cool, but other than that, I never wanted these. Even if I was offered these, I wouldn't even eat them. So, they're they're going in the F for me. Warheads F. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. I don't even like them to this day. I should have threw Sour Patch Kids in here. What was I thinking? I know what I was thinking. There's a lot of shit I could have threw in here, but I, I had a bunch in here, like I said, but I got rid of them. Now, this is a terrible fucking png image of fruit roll-ups but i actually i had trouble fucking finding an image of fruit roll-ups that wasn't like corrupt in some way like every image i tried to bring into photoshop just wouldn't fucking work so i came down to this one and when i i had to remove the background myself and i just wanted to get it over with quick so i used the fucking eraser tool and it just erased everything because the package was white and the background was white. You know, if you know you know Photoshop, you know what happened here. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going and looking for another one because I spent too long on the fruit roll-ups. Let alone all the other hundreds of candy I already had on here. So I said, fuck it. Uh, fruit roll-ups. There's also fruit by the foot. Okay, but these specifically are fruit roll-ups. It's like a sheet of fucking candy. Rolled up like a carpet. And they were very good, colorful, tasty. These are an A for me. I ha I always had these, big time. Now, ring pops. We're moving on to ring pops. I said I, man, I like I swear. I'm trying to run through this quick, not only to eat myself, but to get away from the fucking stench. This whole room is filled up with smoke. <laughs> it smells like burnt ass food. Okay? Like I'm, this whole room is smoke. Because of their fucking cooking downstairs. I can't wait to fucking get out of this life, dude. I'm stuck in misery. Anyway, ring pops. <laughs> it's a big chunk of hard candy on a ring you can wear it on your finger and you just lick it they actually tasted really good they have a great flavor I'm although I'm not a big fan of hard candy I did I would actually find myself buying these because they're pretty decent you can make them last half the day you know you could wear it on your finger while you're playing get everything all sticky <laughs> Um, damn, so what, I'm going to give Ring Pops, fuck, what should I give Ring Pops? A C or a B? I'll put it in the B. I have some good memories with it as well. So B. So delicious. I don't know if these were available in America, but they were definitely available in Canada. They're, you know, the fruit snack type candy they come in little packages in a box but they're they were like they're all shaped like sodas like soda bottles and I can't remember I think they had like a sugary coating but they were a chewy candy with sugary coating and they may have had a little bit of like gooey liquid inside I can't remember I just know that I loved these and I had a lot of these. And they were always hard to find. They were never around usually. And then they just, you know, didn't exist anymore. But these were an A for me. They might even be an S. These are an S. Like, you may have not even heard of these or had these, but they're an S for me. They were great. Way better than Scooby Snacks. Uh, nerds. Nerds. We're down to our last two here. Nerds. Um, I don't know. I don't like hard candy. What can I say? And nerds didn't even taste that good. Great packaging. Phenomenal packaging. 
but you know, I I would eat them. They're all right. Like they taste all right, but I don't I don't like them. F. But are, pi- are Pixie Sticks Wonka? Like all this Wonka candy is an F for me. I'm not a fan of Wonka. <laughs> he needs to get his shit together, bro. Uh, now these 3D fucking chips, like they come in a Pringles tube looking thing. Uh, the Doritos were like. I remember having these. I remember when these came out. They didn't last long at all. I felt like they were only around for a week. But yeah, like the Doritos were like, you know, still triangled, but they were like a puffy triangle with a hollow center. And the cheesies, I mean the Cheetos, were just circles. Hollow circle. Or were they hollow? Maybe they were solid. I don't know. They were just like like cheese balls. And the Funyuns, I don't know. We didn't have Funyuns in Canada. But I remember getting the Doritos, and I actually liked the Doritos in this form. I wish they'd bring this back. I'm going to give these an A. And that's it, folks. Here's my tier list. Read it and weep. Um, yeah, so that was episode 142. Uh, I didn't want to run it on too long here. I did this... I'll do this tier list. I don't know if I'll do it anymore, but, you know, I like to do it every once in a while because it's a thing to do. Uh, And also, I didn't really have a lot of stuff to talk about, but I need to get a podcast out. So, you know, the next episode is going to be much more in-depth with more stuff to talk about, I assume. But by then, I'm I'm probably going to be working somewhere where I don't want to be because it's that time of the year again. And fuck me. You know how much I hate that shit. So anyway, that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tickle that bell notification with your finger. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.